Okay, let's move on to the next application, which is the application in gauge theories. Now the well, gauge theories are, fun, are theories of fundamental particle physics. So all the fundamental forces, the fundamental, you know, uh, uh, forces of nature, you know, except we are not exactly sure about gravity. So I'm going to say, except uh, perhaps gravity, you know, are described by a kind of quantum field theory known as you know, gauge theories. Okay. So gauge theories, uh, you know, these theories are invariant under, uh, you know, action of some compact Lie group. I'll, I'll tell you what compact means when the time comes. Uh, Lie group, compact Lie group, where the group elements are functions of space time. Okay, that's what the gauge means. Um, so essentially this result, you know, this is, um, so we need group theory to describe fundamental particle physics. So that's the lesson. And finally, uh, but not least, uh, uh, last but not least, is Nurture's theorem. So Emmy Nurter was a very famous German mathematician and uh, she had to face a lot of uh, sexism and uh, a lot of uh, discrimination in her time um, against women to uh, have a very successful mathematics career. So, uh, she proved a theorem, amongst other things, and it says that, you know, it's a theorem in classical field theory. And what she showed was that for every continuous symmetry, You know, all of the action, the action is the integral of the Lagrangian, if you don't know. For every continuous symmetry of the action of a classical field theory, so if you're saying what is a classical field theory, think about electromagnetism, electromagnetic field, so uh, for every continuous symmetry of the action of a classical field theory, there exists a conserved, sorry, conserved charge, okay? So that theorem formalizes the fact that, you know, in nature, you know, we see uh, conservation laws, right? Can you guys tell me some of the conservation laws? Energy. Okay. Conservation of energy. Momentum. Okay. Momentum. Electrical charge. Electric charge. Uh, color of quark. Color of what? 
Quark. Quark. Okay, anything else? So this is basically a generalization of electric charge. What about angular momentum? Is that conserved? Yes. Okay, so what Notter showed that for that cons every conserved quantity, there is a symmetry. So energy is conserved means that your theory is invariant under translation under time. That means that your theory doesn't depend on whether you it was today or tomorrow you did the experiment. And Nutter, and it also shows that momentum is conserved as a consequence of space translation. Electric charge is conserved as a consequence of a phase symmetry. And uh, color of quark is a, cons is a consequence of a non-abelian version of phase symmetry. Angular momentum is a consequence of rotational symmetry. Now, this is in classical field theory. In quantum field theory, you know, uh, we want to quantize these theories eventually. In quantum field theory, you know, uh, many of these, many of these, you know, uh, you know, symmetries are unbroken. Symmetries remain unbroken. And then we get, you know, uh, we get quantum version. We get uh, quantum version of conserved charges. So what does that mean? Means that for every observable that is like, these are called charges, you know, we have some Hermitian operator Q and that Hermitian operator in some state of our quantum theory has some expectation value, say Q. Then in quantum mechanics, Nutter's theorem tells us that if you know, if this was a symmetry, if this charge was a result of a symmetry, then that would not change with time. Okay? So we will, uh, I think we will prove Nutter's theorem in some form. So uh, yeah, uh, any questions? Is this related to the probability charge density conservation? Um, No, it's not. Uh, sir, what about spin angular momentum? Yeah, spin is also conserved. Yeah. yeah, so you can add spin to this. But it's conserved if the theory is invariant under, say, uh, that transformation. It could be that your theory is coupled to an external source, which is uh, breaking that symmetry. If that is the case, then that's not gonna be conserved, right? So, we, you know, we see stuff like this. In, if you have done any physics, you know that the hydrogen atom uh, is a, it's a Hamiltonian is, in, is rotationally invariant, but when you put it in a magnetic field, then you get a term in the Hamiltonian which breaks that symmetry. So you know it depends on the on on, on the interaction as well. But yeah, in general, spin should also be you know uh, conserved. It, it, it's one of the possibilities. Okay, any more questions?